from Real Steel. Um, on today's video, we are going to be continuing on the 86 Dodge project. Now, where I left you off last time, uh, it was kind of a curveball, but in a good way. You know, the motor turned out to be good, the tranny turned out to be locked up, and the converter welded in solid. Now, to answer a question, and I know none of you have asked, but I'm going to let you know, I would have had to pull the motor and tranny out anyway. There was no way to fully split that apparatus apart with the motor in it. You know, the tranny did not move. The, the only way that it moved backwards was because of the flex plate, the flex and the flex plate. And I was able to split it enough to get an open end wrench on those upper flex plate bolts. So yeah, it would have had to come off anyway. The only thing is I wouldn't have had to take the motor apart, but that's okay. I wanted to reseal it anyway, where those end uh, seals blew out and everything when the PCV quit. So Anyway, yeah, that's what happened there. So it's probably a good thing, you know, we did what we did. But anyway, to start off with, uh, we are going to harvest the transmission off this van motor. Uh, we're gonna put it in the, uh, put it back behind that 318 uh, that we pulled out of the truck and slam it all in there and go from there, get her put back together. See if we can get her driving. And where we are here, um, while it's still sitting on this trailer apparatus, before I lift it up, I'm going to go ahead and get the lower tranny bolts out, the inspection cover off, and the flex plate unbolted. That way it's kind of sitting solid. I don't want to do it with it swinging in the air. You know, you never know what happens. And uh, chances are I'll probably just put this motor on a stand. But then I'll lift, I'll take it out. We'll lift the motor and tranny up. We'll, uh... Final, pull the top bolts off the tranny on the tailgate of the truck and bring the motor back in and put her down and we'll yeah we'll go from there but i'm gonna set y'all up on the hyperlapse because the lighting is not great in here and watch me take this thing apart got the lower end loose here uh sorry it took so long on the starter chrysler in their infinite wisdom decided to put the exhaust bracket and tranny cooler line bracket on the stud so yeah that took me a while and what you saw me hammering was getting these little 
flex plate bolts loose and if I hammer I don't got to push down on it and turn the motor uh, found a big surprise big old dirt dauber nest on the front of my crank pulley so and that took me a while so I could get the motor turned over but now that the lower ends out I'm going to pull the uh, pull this whole apparatus out of the garage lift the motor up put the tranny on the tailgate and uh, go from there oh and uh, just so you were just in case you were wondering I just grabbed whatever paint I had left Chrysler blue I do believe uh, it's what I painted my other motor with it's going back in the truck uh, I don't know if you can see that you know I marked the flex plate and the converter into its position so now I know it, it'll be exactly the where it goes now that don't got to be perfect but just as long as you mark it because prior to 95 uh, Chrysler had an offset converter bolt so yeah, you can get three in there if it's misaligned. Uh, you're not getting a fourth in there. And if it's a 360 or 340 or even a 400, 440 with ex external balance, you put that thing off, you're in a world of vibration. So let's get this thing pulled out of here and get the tranny, top tranny bolts out and we'll get her off. It's hotter than a peach orchard bore out here today. Boy, I ain't kidding you. All right, guys, it's been a few days since I filmed that last clip. Uh, heat got to me and had a couple other things not go right. Uh, but here we are. Uh, as you can see, motor's in the air. I did change the flex plate. Don't worry, I Loctited the bolt. I want to take a chance on that. And you can see there's the transmission. Uh, there's my paint mark right there that I showed you. This apparatus here, I just, to hold the torque converter in on a small Chrysler tranny and even a big tranny, I find a slightly longer quarter 20 bolt and I put a wrench in there. So yeah, that keeps the converter from backing out. And I really didn't feel like changing a seal or uh, reseating a converter. So yeah, I changed the dipstick. I changed the wiring. This is my truck wiring. I also had to change the kick down lever and the shift bracket. But other than that, it's ready to go. And you can see some of the old stuff I pulled off. The old mount and stuff like that. So yeah, let's get her on there. We got the tranny bolted up. Uh, let's get this converter bolted up real quick. Now, this is a trick I've learned to do. That's why I've done several of these. What you'll want to do is tighten the bolt up just enough to bring the converter in. You know, make sure your other bolts are going to line up. But don't tighten it up so tight. See, your converter has a little bit of slack there. Hear that? You want to leave that slack so you can get your other bolts in. Because if you go to tighten that up and the other bolts aren't in, there's a good chance that you're not going to get them in. And you'll want to also go ahead and lock tight your bolts as well. So, yeah, that's my tip of the day for that. It's worked for me. I've actually tightened a bolt up and locked it into place where I couldn't get another bolt in. So yeah, you don't want to do that, but let's get the converter in. All right, guys, here's my mark. There's my convertible. We are all done. I just did the old hammer torque on them while I held the crank and did the best I could. It's honestly a two-person job, but I did okay. 
Now, because there's not a lot of room down here and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and put the inspection cover and stuff on and I'll bring y'all back when we get ready and uh, move the truck over here and uh, we're getting ready to put this bad boy in. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got the inspection cover on there, the braces, even put the tranny cooler lines on. I had to use one from the truck and one from the van, which that's okay. Uh, yeah, I got the wiring, as I said, kick downs on. I uh, messed the slide up a little bit, pulling the other tranny off. No biggie, I probably got one. Uh, I think, honestly, we're pretty close to... Uh, Picking the truck up, pulling the truck around here, and uh, dropping her in. Oh, and I did put the starter stud in. Um, you can get these inspection covers off without taking it out, but you'll mangle them. So I just generally take it out. You can either double nut it or use vice grips on the little shank portion right there. You know, just however you got to get it out. But you will mangle your inspection cover if you don't pull that out when you're on a small block. Now, big block, it's all separate, but a small block, no. Got to have the stud out. So let's get the truck out over here and uh, get this bad boy in. That took way longer than it should have. Something was fighting me. I'm not sure what it was, but it's in and I'm done for a while. This with my asthma and this humidity, I'm having trouble breathing. So I'll be back out this evening and we'll see if we can button this bad boy up. All right, guys, we are back. I'm feeling a lot better now. The humidity's down. 
still sweating like a pig going to market, but at least there's a breeze now. So hopefully I can tolerate that. Um, I came back out this evening. I went ahead and got the motor locked down and everything underneath, exhaust, shift linkage, drive shaft, got all that stuff hooked up. So now it's on to the top side. We're going to go ahead and throw the top side together. Valve cover's off so I could find top dead center. Because when I pulled the distributor, I thought this motor was bad and I really didn't care. So got that found. Um, I like to work back to front on these when I put them together, opposite of when I take them apart. Just makes things easier, I guess. You can get to the back stuff and then work your way forward. Um, here's all my stuff laying here. Uh, distributor, coil, all that stuff. And we're going to go from there. Sorry, Mortsky, the yellow plug wires stay. I know you think they're obnoxious, but hey. But at least I don't have any flexi hoses, and I don't have Kragers. I got Steelies and Doggies on this bad boy. So hey, that's got to account for something, right? But anyway, let's get started. Um, first tip, though, this goes for anything. When you have to pull a transmission or a motor or whatever, and there's any chance the distributor is going to contact the firewall, pull it. Because I've seen these bend and they'll wobble, they'll wobble around like a drunk on an old uh, unbalanced bar stool. Uh, they'll work, but they wobble real bad and can tear some stuff up. So, yeah, as a precaution, you know, I just go ahead and pull the distributor out if I'm pulling a motor or pulling a transmission where the motor's got to rest on the firewall. But anyway, uh, I'm going to set up the laps and uh, you can watch me work front to back. Hope you a little enjoyed that. Um, losing light here, but I do want to fire this thing up before I uh, pack it in for the night. So I'm going to go ahead and install the fuel pump and some other wiring, and we'll see uh, see if she can get we can get her to light off. And I'll bring y'all back when it's time for me to try. All right, guys, we got the oil changed, got the battery hooked up. Uh, it is cranking, so here we go. Fire no! <laughs>
Go park working and everything. Woohoo! y'all all right now that smoke is oil re residue leaking off everything and a little bit of coolant residue um we're not going to get her together tonight but hopefully tomorrow uh we can finish it up and take it for a drive so yeah i'm really excited and i'm gonna end tonight with a little bit of exhaust noise Now that is a one in, two out Flowmaster imitation. Uh, don't sound bad for a little 318, but anyway, yeah, we're gonna leave you tonight with that. Not sure if this is the end of the video or not. Um, it's gone on pretty good, but if it is, next part we will put this front end back together and we're gonna drive this thing. So yeah, this is Jamie from Real Steel Auto Works and we'll catch y'all on the flip side. See ya.